It is my honor to bring to you a man who has been around Wakefield Athletics for a long time, a very long time. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Billy McKay. second canal to be inducted into the uh, Wakefield Athletic Hall of Fame. Uh, I, I want to personally thank uh, Peter's brothers and family for in inviting me here to speak on Peter's behalf. Um, we got a chance to get uh, together a few times over the last couple of years. The, the family was absolutely amazing over the last couple of years, as, as difficult as it was. Um, and I, I think uh, for me, it, it, it just was a reflection of, of our youth growing up, what, what Wakefield was, and I'm sure still is, I haven't been around in a couple of decades, but it was always an amazing community, and uh, sports was a, a big, a very big part of it. Um, I, I was trying to think, you know, where we first met. I think we just met hanging out at our brother's games. Um, Peter had three older brothers and a younger brother, and I had an older brother, and my older brother, Mike, and Peter's older, oldest brother Mike were uh, were the same age, so we would go to all their games, and and we were the guys, the little the kids that you'd see that we'd grab the balls, and every time out we'd go shoot. They kick us off the court. We'd go out at halftime. They kick us off the court. We'd hang around after, and so for for years we would just you know the little kids from town that would just mess around at all the games, uh, whether it was pop one or football or youth basketball, and. Uh, we, we just became inseparable. We were, we were at each other's brother's games constantly. And um, over the years, it, it kind of became our turn. But we both benefit from getting beat up by our brothers all the time. And you've already heard the theme tonight with a lot of these uh, people that have achieved great things, that they mention siblings, and they mention uh, teammates that are older than they are that, that kind of pushed them and motivated them. Um, the, the first thing everyone recalls about Peter is his, is his smile. Uh, the picture in the program is, is perfect. Was, was that Peter? All you know, always grinning, always smiling. And when you have older brothers, they, they constantly tease you. So they, they used to, the kids at school would call him Smiley, but their brothers would try to convince him that he was actually an adopted uh, child from a Chinese family overseas. <laughs> back in the 70s, we, we weren't real politically correct back then. You know? so when you had brothers. Uh, that were older, I mean, you'd get tortured, you know, constantly. And, uh, you know, it was the same in my house, whether it was wiffle ball or basketball. Our older brothers would keep us in the mix and, and let it let us compete to the point where we thought we could win. And then at that one instance where you just about are ready to maybe beat your big brother for the first time, they would annihilate you, you know. And so there were tantrums, things would get thrown, things would get said. 
tears uh, would be shed, and then uh, you know you're off you're off to the next day. But um, the other the other thing Peter would want to do is just thank everybody. Um, I think the first person he'd want to thank is his, is his mom Barbara. Um, Mother Teresa has nothing on Barbara. I mean, Barbara dealt with five boys over the course of uh, ages that span 14 years. So I was kidding John tonight. I said, was Paul a mistake, the youngest? Because <laughs> you know, he's like six years younger than Peter. And John said, no, actually, the first four came in such succession, they were all boys. So Barbara thought the best strategy was a wait a little bit. <laughs> and then came the, the fifth boy. So that, that didn't work. And I'm the father of three daughters. So um, I think I got my fill of boys in 15, 20 years of hanging out with the Ganella boys. Um, but Barbara's been there every step of the way. Uh, I can still smell the spaghetti sauce on the stove. After every game, we'd have parties at the house. There was always pasta on. There was always food. Um, we lived in the driveways at each other's houses. We had spotlights so we could play basketball all night long. Uh, eventually a neighbor would call the police and they'd drive by and tell us to wrap it up for the night. And then we'd do it again the next night. Um, but in, in, all the, in all the years, just hanging around with our older brothers, playing in the playgrounds at JJ Round, playing in the driveways, uh, youth basketball, traveling teams, junior high basketball, um, we got we got to be pretty good. Uh, and, uh, we'd hang around the gym. My dad ran the youth basketball program for about 30 years. It was for sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. And we used to hang out when we were in second and third grade. And if a kid was sick or injured, uh, they'd let us play. So it was no surprise that we got to be pretty good because we were in the youth basketball program for like eight years. It was a three-year program. <laughs> uh, so that was that was always fun. Uh, Peter became just a great player. He was about six foot four. He could do everything. He could handle the ball. He could score the ball, pass. He could play multiple positions, uh, guard different players. Um, but it was just a, it was just a way about him. He was just always happy, you know, always smiling, and uh, always upbeat, and um, uh, just just always really fun to be around. And uh, you know, he, he was, it's been great to kind of re-engage with the family over the, over the last couple of years. Um, I, I know that uh, he's really proud of, of his wife, Carrie, who's here, and the kids, uh, Cameron's, his oldest son, uh, Francesca and Joey, and uh, unfortunately, Peter's oldest daughter, Angela, is uh, at the University of Mississippi. He wanted to thank his brothers for all the, all the lessons growing up. Um, Mike is in Phoenix. Mike's the oldest. Mark is next. He's down in North Carolina. His dad, Tony, is uh, fighting back, back issues in North Carolina. Couldn't be here. Tony was at every game we ever played, home or away, uh, always there and supportive. Um, so uh, many of you know Paul's uh, the, the recruiting coordinator at the University of Alabama football, and they won today. But he was uh, unfortunately uh, unable to attend. So um, so anyways, just, just great memories, great people. It's great to see uh, Mike Mercurio and Joe Ventura and Tommy McKay and some of Peter's buddies uh, that have stepped up over the last year or two on behalf of Peter and the family. Um, and it's just a great tribute to the kind of kid he was. Um, I, I will say this to the, to the, to the kids, Kerry, you know, Peter was a little mischievous too, you know. There, there was rumors, I don't know if they were true, that you know, occasionally there were, there were kids in Greenwood throwing snowballs at cars or uh, you know, missing a class here or there. Um, he wanted to thank Brad Simpson, who's here, and Sunny Lane um, for, for all the lessons on the basketball court in junior high and through high school. Um, Peter played for a couple amazing coaches. He went to a junior college. He ended up at a junior college in Lake Placid, New York, and played for a guy named Kevin O'Neill, who's now the head coach at USC, coached in the NBA. He played for Tommy Thibodeau at Salem State, who's now the head coach of the Chicago Bulls. And I'm still in basketball, and I see those guys a lot. And they, uh, they first thing they want to talk about is Peter, and uh, and how the family's doing. And uh, Kevin told me a funny story today. He said, uh, he said when I first called to try to recruit Peter, I saw I saw a film of him, and you people probably think video. It was it was Super 8 back in the, those days. Brad, do you remember Sonny would have this little projector, and he'd film all the games, and he'd, he'd run them forward and back and torture us in practice make us watch it. So somehow uh, somehow Kevin got a film of Peter and uh, 
called him up and, and uh, he said uh, he was with a junior college in Lake Placid. Peter said, Lake where? Lake, what, Lake where? He said, Lake Placid, New York. And Peter said, was it warm there? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin laughed. I said, Kevin, the only lake he knows is Lake Quantapower. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, after all these years, Kevin coached at the highest levels of college and NBA. You know, he speaks of Peter no different than, than the superstars that he coached. And uh, he reflected on how great a great a player he was. Um, you probably want to thank my dad who ran the kids program because we were just always around basketball. Uh, we went on traveling teams, we played in tournaments, um, you know, that was a big part of it. Uh, I'm sure he'd want to, you know, thank his dad for being there for all the games. Um, and uh, it, just the community in general, because uh, as you saw in the last couple of years, as he was, you know, courageously battling uh, pancreatic cancer, the, the community really stepped up and was there for him. But, but uh, they, the community's already always been there for all of us as kids growing up in Wakefield. And, uh, it's great to see uh, a lot of faces in the room that uh, I haven't seen in quite some time and to know that uh, sports is still a real big part of the, the community here and uh, a great reason why uh, you know kids go on and do great things. We turn on the football game today to Harvard Yale is a, is a Wakefield grad playing on the offensive line at Harvard. You know the, the, the dozens of kids that went on to play college sports uh, and do great things with their careers. So. Uh, on behalf of Peter's uh, uh, family, uh, I think it's a great honor, and uh, 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 he's uh, there's not a day that goes by when I, when I don't think about him, and I can call the brothers up and uh, and reminisce. And uh, uh, it was a, it was a special time. Peter said that when reflecting back, other than his his experiences with the family and carrying the kids, that uh, the best times of his lives of his life was playing sports in Wakefield growing up and hanging out with his brothers. He, uh, the last story I'll tell you was a little bit of a surprise to me. We were in Mass General and he said uh, that one of his best memories was getting to start with John, who was a year older than me. And he, I said, well that was when I got hurt. And he said, well, I didn't want you to get hurt that bad. He goes, but I, wasn't, I was okay with you getting hurt a little bit so I could start with my brother John. <laughs> so uh, family's always been you know, the most important thing to be here in the family. The, the family's amazing, continues to amaze me. Um, so on, on, on behalf of everybody, uh, I just want to say thank you uh, for recognizing Peter's accomplishments. And he was one of the greatest athletes that have ever come through Wakefield. Thank you. Francis has come up, we'd like to show you a, uh, a short video of uh, Peter's induction. <laughs> 